Hello IDM students. Welcome to my first tutorial on the pen tool in Photopia. Um, Photopia is obviously found at photopia.com and it is a clone of Photoshop but it's browser based so it means it can run on your Chromebooks or whatever else you want to run it on. It's obviously not as powerful or quite as um, seamless or smooth as Photoshop but it will get the job done while you're working at home during your at-home learning periods. Now what I've done is I've gone to file open and I've actually opened the series of exercises you're going to be working on in the pen tool. Starting with exercise number one, remember you can just click on these to move between them. If you ever want to rename the exercise, say for the purposes of uh, saving it as something different, you can just double click there and right on the tab and you can rename it. But I'm not going to do that right now. A couple things to keep in mind. Over here on the right hand side, you have your layers palette. That's very important. We're going to go into it more later. But for, mo for the moment, just know that this image you're seeing right here is your background layer. Whatever, if it's a JPEG or a PNG you're opening up, it'll always open up with that as the background layer. <clears throat> now, pen tool. Pen tool is found on the left hand side in your toolbar. Its hotkey is P. If you click on it, there are a couple settings you need to um, make sure you've filled out in order for this exercise to start properly. Number one, make sure that you have shape selected. Number two, make sure your fill is set to empty, which is this one right here, or none. And make sure your stroke is set to a color. In this case, I'm going to choose red. I'm going to set my stroke width to about five points. Now, as always, the first and most important part of using any program like Photoshop or Photopia or any of the other Adobe products is knowing some of the basic navigation hotkeys. The first one is spacebar. Notice when I press spacebar, my cursor turns into a little hand tool. At the moment, I'm zoomed out, so I can't do much with it, but I'm going to show you what happens when I zoom in. Now, to zoom in, I hold down spacebar with my pointer finger and then use my middle finger to hit the command key and hold that down as well. You'll notice as I do that, I get the magnifying glass icon. I then click where I want to zoom in in my image. So I'm going to zoom into about this level. Now I'm going to show you what that spacebar key does. So if I hold down spacebar, I get the hand. It allows me to click and drag my way around my image. So I'm going to get you to practice that a little bit. Often when I'm working the pen tool, I do want to be fairly zoomed in. The cool thing about hitting spacebar and moving to the hand tool is it remembers whatever you were doing previously. So the moment you release the spacebar, you can just continue with what your previous action was. And you won't, for instance, deselect your line or interrupt whatever else you were doing. It basically is just a little override and then you automatically back to the previous tool. Now, if you want to zoom out, holding down with your pointer finger space bar, your middle finger command, and then right beside that, so these are all three in a row, use your ring finger to hold down option, and that switches that zoom in, magnifying glass to a zoom out, and then you can just click to zoom out. Those three in combination allow you to move around your canvas. That's really important. So space bar is the grabber, space bar command or control if you're on your Chromebook is zoom in, and spacebar control alt is zoom out. So important thing to remember between the Macs and PCs or Chromebooks, control and command are always the same when you're when you're kind of crossing platforms and option and alt are essentially the same key. So all the hot key sort of commands if you're doing it on the Mac will be command or option and if you're on a PC control or alt, but those essentially function the same. Now, going back, making sure I've got my pen tool here and move myself into a good position. The pen tool works by setting pen points, and then it will draw a line between these points in the form of a line segment. So what I'm going to get you to do in this first exercise is you just actually click right in the middle of each of these points. So click. You'll notice a little blue dot appears. That's you've set your first point. There's no place for this line to go and so there isn't a line yet. Notice as soon as I click a new shape layer appears. I'm going to click here, click, click, click. 
I'm going to intentionally make a mistake here, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. So click and hold down spacebar to move me over. Click and click. In order to deselect your line, notice it's selected because we've got the uh, the blue sort of uh, dots and line inside it. You just hold down Command or Control and you just kind of click off of it here. Oops. Now, I've made a mistake here. In order to fix that mistake, what I need to do is I need to go right underneath the pen tool and you need to click and hold, then select the direct selection tool. You'll be using this one a lot. It's the white arrow. Select it and I can click on my line. Oh, making sure I am on that layer. So make sure if you've accidentally created a new layer, garbage it. Make sure you're on the layer of that uh, line you made. That is important because if you click off it, you can't see it. So make sure you're in shape one. Select the node or the, the vector point. Click and you can actually just drag it down to the correct position. So if you ever need to adjust these lines, you can always click on the points and move them around. So I'm going to let you practice on the second one. That is the intro to basic straight lines.